Ramirez starting off with a left hook, but there's an answer with a right cross from Jonas Sultan. You know what I like about Sultan right now is the patience. He's being patient. And he's trying to fight in the right time to explode with his right hand. Because that's the punch you want to use against the southpaw. There's a straight right hand, followed by the left hook. This is the that's second. Exact, exact same way Carabao fights. He's very patient. He's even deceptive in his approach. And then all of a sudden he'll explode with those power shots. He's an explosive guy, but you wouldn't be able to tell watching this first round. Sultan is very comfortable fighting southpaws. Not only did he spar Jerwin on Cajas at the wild card for this fight, but this is the second consecutive southpaw and fourth in his last six fights that he faced. And so he's coming off of a win against southpaw Sharon Carter. You can't beat him, join him, I guess. Nice right hand from uh, Sultan. Yeah, that was produced off a feint. He did a foot feint. Trapped Carabao in the corner and came behind with the right hand. There's power in the ring tonight with Caraballo and Jonas Sultan, but there's also power in what Jose Zapata brings to the ring. It's heart, it's a southpaw stance, and 26 knockouts and 34 victories. None more impressive than the fight of the year in 2020 against Ivan Baranchik. Both fighters went to the canvas four times, but it was the fifth time that made the difference in favor of Jose Zapata. It was a back and forth affair. The strength and physicality of Ivan Baranchik. Every punch he threw had bad intentions, but there was always something coming back from the not so timid Jose Zapata, and that left hook ended the fight. Bend the leg, bend the knee, bend the will of Ivan Baranchik. It was a knockout of the year, the fight of the year, down, and it was go. also the round of the year, that fifth round down, where Zapata finished that, that fight. Water. Did that fight elevate his status or did it take something out of him? And that is what Jose Vargas is betting on, the latter when he goes into the ring against Jose Zapata in our main event. Jonas Sultan in the black trunks pushing forward out of the Philippines against the Puerto Rican Carlos Caraballo. The southpaw with the red and white trunks. Nice quick hands from Caraballo, but then he gets caught to the body by Jonas Sultan. And now down goes Caraballo. There was a punch, and was it a trip? The punch. Caraballo leaves his chin up in the air when he shoots punches. So nice funny. short right hand from Jonas Sultan. And we didn't used to say that about him, Dre. He threw looping shots, and now he's under control. Yeah, he looks a lot more polished. And he's doing a good job right now. And this is this is time for Caballo to respond. Both what this fight was all about. Trading leather. He's ever fought. Yeah, he's, got, he, he's facing some adversity. Let's see his response. A nice left there by Caraballo who has been down against Pedro Rodriguez once before in his professional career in April of 2018, but not since until tonight. Caraballo is reacting like a true fighter. He's fighting back. He's fighting smart. Eyes are wide open, and he's looking for counters. He's looking for something to make mistakes. The crowd was yelling, Boudin, which is... The nickname that Caraballo's mother and grandmother gave him back in Puerto Rico. Sultan says, you yell what you want, but that's not going to stop me from digging to the body. A nice right hand there from Joe. The Sultan got two fighters in the family apart from himself. An older and a younger brother. And he sends his money back Break home. He's got a newborn punch. daughter that he has punch. yet nice. to listen. spend time with. He met her once since she's been born. He said, I can't wait to go back home. The sacrifices that fighters make.
I want you guys at home to pay attention when Carabao, when he throws a combination, he lifts his head up ever so slightly. He has to be careful, especially when he's shooting combinations in front against Salton, who has a big right hand. Salton just shook off that one-two combination from Carlos Caraballo, who's not used to seeing that happen. As Andre, let's take a look at how Caraballo ended up on the canvas against Jonas Sultan. Well, these fighters were in close quarters, and at first glance, you might miss it. See Sultan doing what Sultan does, press it, and then a right hook gets in there, lands right on the chin of Caraballo, and puts him on the seat, the seat of his pants. We see inside close quarters, just a short right hook. It landed. I don't think Caraballo ever saw it coming, nope. and he wasn't extremely hurt. It was a flash knockdown, but he got up and he responded well. See, the shot landed, it was short. It was short and precise, and it was the right punch at the right angle. And you have a guy that's putting those hands up in the high guard, the middle. You split the middle with the, with the uppercut. That's exactly what Salton does there. Round two of a scheduled 10 round fight. Caraballo down for the second time in his career in round one. Let's see, in round two, let's see what the response is from the Puerto Rican knockout artist against Jonas Sultan, who keeps getting better with Jovan Jimenez in his corner. Again, it's the patience. It's the patience. Ooh. That's another knockdown for Jonah Sultan. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Step to me, baby. Come on. Take one step over there. You good? Okay. Donnie Collis with the new protocol of making sure that Caraballo is okay after being dropped for the second time in this fight by Jonas Sultan, who's coming in for the finish with a vicious uppercut, and he gets pushed away by Caraballo. It's gut check time for the young Puerto Rican. You said it, Bernardo, gut check. That's what it's all about. Let's slip. No knockdown, no knockdown. Nice left hook Good at shot. Caraballo. Wanting to keep Sultan off shot. of him. What happens when you get down on the cards? You go down a couple of times. Can you keep your composure? Can you stay with the plan? Can you think in there? Can you battle back and win? That's what makes champions. Tonight, we're going to find out what type of fighter Carabao is. Carabao's already shown that he can keep his composure. He's already shown us that. The question is, can he make, what's his, his plan B? Because right now, plan A isn't working. That's what we want to see is, can he pull out the plan B and it, can it be strong enough to get him back into this fight? I'm telling you, it's a precise attacks by Salton. That's what's giving him problems. He explodes at the right time. It's patient. It's not reckless aggression. He's pressing forward, inching closer and closer, and then he explodes with his offense. This is a guy in Jonas Sultan who has a victory by unanimous decision over John Real Casimero, as tough a guy as you will see in boxing. So he's obviously got some skills and he's developed a lot working with Jerwin Nankajas over at the wildcard gym in training with Joven Jimenez. Definitely see improvement. Definitely see improvement in Sultan. More polished, more patient, more deliberate. He's thinking. You can tell he's thinking. Sultan allowing his punches to do the talking. And there goes Caraballo with a good close to that round. And they're calling it a knockdown. So it evens things up there in round number three. So a double knockdown there in round number three. Wow. You see a cut now developing on the left cheekbone 
of Jonas Sultan. And we'll take a look at these knockdowns, Tim. Let's let's first look at how Carabayo went down earlier in this uh, round number three. Let's see Carabayo. Let's see why he went down. This is the first one, Tim. Just a short shot. Carabayo was in the corner, pinned in the corner. He's looking to get room. He steps back. He throws the left hand, but he drops the opposite hand. Gets caught with a nice little short hook. The glove that's, just touched. But that's not, I, I mean, a shot, I mean, a shot honestly didn't land right there. I mean, it landed Second on the, time, on the back. Close, Obviously, Salt wasn't okay. hurt. Glove did touch the ground. And, and that's the question now is how do the judges give the points on that it, round? It, it has to be a 10-point must it, minus the deduction for the, the knockdown. It wasn't a knockdown, honestly. If you but go it was back counted, and look at, It was counted it was as a counted. knockdown because it's hard yeah. to see it in real speed, in real time. But if you had instant replay, it would have been great. Yeah, this is one of those instances, Andre, where instant replay would have changed things up. Absolutely. <laughs> And that's got to be a big boon in terms of the psychology for Caraballo because instead of being down 10-8, 10-8, all of a sudden he's in the fight. Yes, he's back in he's his back fight He's back in the now. fight with that. Yeah, and, it, and it, it gave him some confidence as well. But a couple things are working against Caraballo. He's got those rounds in the back of his mind. He hasn't been past six. I don't care how many rounds you go in the gym until you do it and prove that you can do it. You're going to be thinking about it. And Sultan is still coming forward landing shots like that. <laughs> I mean, that... that that entry speed of Salton is something else. When he attacks, he's precise and strong with those combinations. Oh, he hurt right there. He was hurt by that left hand from Carabayo. See Carabayo now working the jab downstairs. But you also got to watch the psychology of Carabayo, too, because he's 14 and 0 with 14 knockouts. Now he's hitting the guy, and the guy's not really going anywhere, responding like the other fighters did. How can Caraballo respond to that? The one thing that I like about Caraballo is, Dre, by watching him on film, is just, he's patient. He's not one of those guys that's hey, enamored with his punching power. He's okay with going the distance and winning round by round, boxing his way to victory. And if he catches him with the kill shot, then he catches him. That's what he told us in the fighter meetings. His philosophy for, philosophy for this fight was winning round by round. But if that shot opens up for him, I'm going to take it. That's what he said in terms of how he's going to win this fight. Is now both fighters exchange right in the center of the ring. Crowd hyped up here at the Hulu Theater. Backing him up, Bernardo. That's why he's having success. Yes, Look at the sir. legs of Jonas Sultan. He's dancing around the ring. And now you see the power of Caraballo changing things up. This is our fight. He's ours. Come on, give me that ice. All right, this is a left hand that just landed at the end of the round. Beautiful shot right here. Ooh. On the neck, right on the neck. You see Salton, he was looking for an uppercut, trying to catch Caraballo on the way in. Missed. That's why it's important to throw the uppercut at the right range. And if you miss, you get hit with straight shots like that, right down the middle. Nice little follow-up to the body and to the head. Now, I'm not sure that didn't cause a slight cut on the right eye of Jonas Sultan. Oh, he's fine. You, you want to know what this reminds me of? You remember Tito early in his career, even sometimes late in his career? Yes. Puerto Rican going down several times and then coming up and finishing a guy? We, did, we might be witnessing this. My paisano, Yori Boy Campas, who dropped Tito Trinidad. The worst thing you could do is drop him and not finish him because yeah, right. he was going to come back with a vengeance. He almost decapitated Campas <laughs> in that fight. I remember that vividly. And he wasn't the only one it happened to. No. Many. 
Carbine Warren for a low blow, and then he goes to the head as Sultan lands a nice right. See that jab right there? That's what's going to do it for Carbino right there. That jab. It's frustrating getting hit in the face over and over with the jab when you're trying to set up your offense. You got to regroup. Woo! And here we go. The crowd is on their feet because Sultan and Carabayo came to fight. This is a throwdown. It's a skillful throwdown. Yeah. Both these guys are thinking, man. And Carabayo, he's made some adjustments. He's made some adjustments. He's backing up Sultan. That's one adjustment. And then he's just letting his shots go from the range that he's comfortable in, and he's having success right now. He's shaking off those knockdowns, and he's back in this fight. The Sultan is still very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Legs are still sturdy. Nice see, stick from Caraballo. Very nice stick. But see, anytime Caraballo gets off first, Sultan don't know what to do. He has to get off first. What was the dig early on in Manny Pacquiao's career? Back him up. Yes. But that's hard to do. Uh, I'm going to let you know that. Well, yeah, because he's got seven punches coming at you, and then he's gone. But you got to have punching power also when you're facing Manny Pacquiao. Just the physique, the strength of Jonas Sultan. That's not helping him right now, Bernardo. Yeah. He's breathing pretty hard, too. Ooh, nice left from Caraballo. Just hunted him down with it. The one thing that's improved, too, in Jonas Sultan, his defense. So a lot of these punches by Caraballo are catching some glove as well. Halfway through this fight, guys. All right, Carlos Caraballo back into this fight, and sometimes, Jerry, it's just punches that look better than they are. Yeah, this is the kind of action we've been getting all night where both fighters are in range to be hit and to hit, and both fighters landed right there, and nobody wants to take a backward step. We see an incidental headbutt right there, and Caraballo doesn't stop to acknowledge it. He fires the straight left hand and gets Sultan's attention. And in a close round like these, Tim, that type of shot where it looks like the opponent is, that, that Sultan is hurt may sway the judges in that direction. You said it right, Bernardo. You said it right. These are very tough rounds to score. I mean, going back to that double knockdown round, you may give it to Sultan because he had a, a clean knockdown, but nonetheless, it's just these guys are thinking, these guys are throwing, these guys are catching. And you just have that feeling that this fight could change on one punch at any moment. That's right. Mm. Beautiful footwork right there from Carbio. And that combination was set up by that footwork, but then Jonas Sultan came back with something of his own. Watch your hands. I asked Jovan Jimenez what advice, what strategic hey, advice he had for Jonas go. Sultan. He said, I told him, this is for your family. Mm. It's early to go to that well, isn't it? Round number six. <laughs> Usually we hear that really late in the fight, Dre. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, the inspiration is good. You got to remind a fighter why they're fighting, but you also got to tell them how they can win the fight. Give them some instructions. Oh! And maybe that's exactly what Jonas Sultan needed. And he's hurt. Five, six, seven, eight. Walk to me. Carlos, walk to me. 
third knockdown of this fight. And Jonah Sultan is ready to make it four. Caraballo has never been past round six. And Sultan wants to make sure that stays, it stays that way. Boom. Like Drake said earlier, this fight is far from being over. You see a little momentum shift, and then boom, all it takes is one punch. That's the beauty about boxing. And that was Caraballo with a short right hook. The fight really just started, fellas. It's the sixth <laughs> round. It's the first of the back stretch of this fight. It really just started. And it's new territory after this round for Caraballo. Carlos, keep your hands out the back of his head. The Sultan has been 12 four times. He's been 10 rounds three times. So this is familiar territory for him beyond the sixth. Gotta give Carabayo a lot of credit in terms of his recovery powers because he's been down three times and only been once down once before in his career. And he's in against a hard puncher in Jonas Sultan, who's a stalker, who's on him right now, trying to finish the fight. But it looks like Carabayo will finish the sixth round on his feet and will be in uncharted territories when the bell rings for round number seven. This was the cleanest knockdown of the fight, Tim. And Jonas Sultan set Carvalho up perfectly. Well, when you're fighting that southpaw, what's the punch of, of, of choice? A right hand. Beautiful job slipping right in between that jab right there. Check it out. No, that was a legit Beautiful knockdown. shot right down the middle. Me. Got his head a little slightly off the line. Right hand right down the middle. Boom. Short, tight, precise punch by Sultan. Wow. That's called anticipation. He was anticipating that jab. He knew the single jab was going to come. And once he saw it, set up that right hand, right down the middle. Made him pay the price, did Jonas Sultan. I mean, it would be three, ten, eight rounds had that third round not resulted in that double knockdown for each guy. And so here we are in the seventh round, and we'll see how... Carabao responds to being in uncharted waters. I'm gonna tell you right now, Carabao, he's gonna need a knockout. He's gonna need yeah. a knockout. Yes, that's what he's gonna need. Mathematically, even though they exchanged knockdowns, it was still a round that favored Jonas Sultan. Right. Ooh, low blow. Total power punches through six rounds, 138 for Sultan. That's 31 more than Carabao has been able to land. I asked Juan De Leon what advice he had for Carabao, who's never been this far in a fight. He says, listen, keep boxing, use your jab, and stay out of the damn corners. <laughs> Easier said than done. Because here comes Jonas Sultan pushing Carabao back. One of the biggest flaws. See, that's the angle, and that's the place that Carabao needs to move. He needs to move to his right, to the left of Sultan. He has a habit of moving to his left. Constantly, right in the line of fire, the right hand of Sultan. Just watch how he keeps moving that way left. There he is again. Sultan's just looking to set up that right hand. And he does there with a nice overhand right and then an uppercut. And I'll tell you another thing. What Sultan is doing to keep him from going to that angle, every now and then he'll shoot a hook over the top and catch Carabao. There it is. Nice See right. the hook? Carabao had a nice right hook. There's no a back down to Carabao. No back down at all. He's checked that gut box. He checked that. Now he's got to prove that he's got legitimate power, elite power at this step up in competition, Dre. And he just landed yeah, a nice I mean, left. Yeah, if you don't know if the 14 0 14 knockouts is real, I mean, you don't know what kind of power you have until you start knocking out elite guys. But he's heavy handed. You can tell by the way the punches are landing. And he's got an IQ, but will it be enough tonight for Jonas Sultan? Because Sultan is on his game tonight. And Sultan also keeps proving that he's got a heavy right hand. And if Carabao, if he continues to move that way and keep his hands 
back, on that line. Step, he gonna get knocked back, out tonight. Step back. Mm. Nice left once again from Caraballo. Just when you think Ooh. he's out of it, here he comes with his money shot. That left hook that lands repeatedly on the eye, on the ear of Jonas Sultan, who somehow is still standing. Let's look at our punch of the night brought to you by Moose Mobile. And you pointed it out, Tim. There's been some peeling happening here, and it was Dakota Linger on Matthew Gonzalez. That's Linger right there, baby. Beautiful peel right there. Just to knock the guards down. Scar manipulation right there. Finding the opening. It was a draw that Dakota Linger deserved to win. It's a draw in your opponent's hometown, which means that you won that fight. Just a really entertaining bout on our undercard here at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. Through seven rounds, we've had four knockdowns scored officially, and three of those belong to Jonas Sultan. It really could be three to nothing and be it completely out of hand on the scorecards, but Caraballo is still in this fight as he proved to be right at the end of that seventh round. Uncharted territory once again for him in round number eight, and he's responding with character. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to tell based on the way he just came out in that eighth round and the way he finished that seventh round. He came up with another answer in that seventh round, which is the left hand that Sultan can't seem to get away from, and that left hand is bothering Sultan. In fact, he hurt him in that last round. He needs to pick up where he left off. Keep him up. Keep him up, Jonas. Keep your hands out the back of his neck, Carlos. Sultan's doing something smart. He's always having something coming back for Caraballo. There's no free left hooks for Caraballo here. Yeah, that's... You got, you're in there with a great counter puncher. What you do is you counter the counter. You know when you let your hands go, he's going to counter you, but then you got to counter right back. There's that left hook. And now oh, right hand and down for those... Ooh, Sultan was down from a two-punch combination. And oh, Johnny Collis says it was no knockdown. We'll have replay, but the commission will not. So it doesn't really matter what we saw. It's what Johnny Collis saw. The crowd getting a chant of Purin going for Caraballo. Low blow there from Caraballo. And that's a good shot from Caraballo with the left. The left hand. If he, can, if, he, if he can start with the jab and then come with the left hand, he's going to have more success because Sultan is slowing down just enough, and he can't get away from the lead left, so he's definitely not going to be able to get away from a, a, a left that's coming behind a jab. You know, we always talk about fighters reverting to who they are. Sultan is looping his shots. He's not underneath his feet right now, and this is a great spot for Caraballo to take advantage of that like he does there with the left hook. Caraballo has now made Sultan bleed from the right cheekbone, and now it's Caraballo who slips after landing a big shot. One, two from Caraballo. He's found a second win, and he's making yeah, Sultan oh pay goodness. for the three visits to the canvas. He's going for it. He's going for it, Bernardo. Nice body shot there from Caraballo. Once again, digging downstairs. Sultan's right hand doesn't have that same crisp power behind it, but Caraballo's left does. What an eighth-round comeback from Caraballo here against Jonas Sultan, the Filipino warrior. So... It's interesting to see if it was or was not a knockdown here in favor of Caraballo or if it was a Jonas Sultan slip. Right, so, let's take a look at this right quick. Nice miss right there from Caraballo. Body shot. See the legs go out. See the left arm? That was a slip. 
no real hard shot really landed on the body right there. Body control, and he just pushed him down. Great call. Great call by the ref. Oh, you got Salton sitting right still. He's sitting still right down the middle. Carabao, what he does, he meets him with a straight left hand right down the pipe. That shot is there for him all night long. Anytime Salton sits directly in front of him and don't use any offense, he needs to throw that left hand right down the middle. We, we know what their weaknesses are, Dre. Caraballo can be hit by the straight right, Sultan by the left. Who's going to land it? That's the question. Yeah, but Caraballo's taking this thing to another level, and he stepped up another gear. And so far, Sultan has not answered over the last two rounds. And I want to see if Caraballo can close the show. That was the question. He can close the show in these next two rounds. He'd never been past six. What was going to be his reaction? And here it is. Caraballo upping his punch output. And Sultan so far not having an answer to that left hand in the last three rounds. There it is once again. And Sultan reeling backwards from a left hook from Caraballo. Follows it up with a straight left. The legs of Sultan... Okay, once again, their feet get tangled. It happens all the time, Tim, when it's a southpaw and an orthodox fighter. Yes, it does. All the time. You got both lead feet on the same side. Nice left uppercut from Caraballo. But it's those punches. It's Sultan getting hurt. It's the fatigue from the pace of the fight. All those things have taken the legs of Sultan. So much so where he doesn't feel comfortable coming forward. Like oh, but down goes Caraballo once again oh when he was having his best moment. <laughs> Fourth visit like to the cast. Knockdowns. Yes, these flash knockdowns that the last knockdown hurt Carabao, but that one is just it just puts him down. He's not hurt. And it's a flash. Dre. No chin. No chin. At I'm all. not going there with you tonight, I, I, Timmy. I'm not doing that. We got a great fight. Carabao's fighting a great fight. I'm not going there with you, Timmy. I mean, just when it looked like Carabao started to get some of those points back because of the that he was losing because of the knockdowns sultan drops him once again and tim you said it three rounds ago he needs a knockout to win now it's even more evident that that's the only way he comes away with the win at madison he gotta Square turn it up yeah. he gotta he gotta put it he gotta put the press the pedal down to the floor and he gotta turn it up and he has to go for the knockout this is what champions are made of These guys are heating up tonight's main event between Jose Zapata and Josue Vargas. I'm going to tell you something right now. Caraballo, the problem he's making, he's not putting any, he's not investing in the body of Salton. You got a big, strong guy like Salton. If you go down to the body, you're going to weaken him. You're going to take more of his leg, more of his conditioning. Too busy head on him. There's Jonas Sultan walking down Carlos Caraballo here in round number nine. It looks like Caraballo is going to have one chance in this fight, and that's to come out in round 10, a round he's never been in before, and just let it all hang out. But so far, Andre, when Caraballo's finally getting some momentum, <laughs> Jonas Sultan finds a way to say, not tonight, my son. Not tonight. Jonas Sultan, he just lands the shot in the right spot. That puts Caraballo down, and that's just a sweeping left hook. Not a big left hook. He missed. He faced with the right, and came back with the left, and he put so he put Caraballo down. And again, we don't know what type of punch Caraballo can take. They both have been wobbled. They both have been down. But I think Sultan is a combination of Sultan having punching power and landing in the right spot. This has been a grueling fight, and both guys are fatigued. And those are the results that you get. Oh my gosh, I'm. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little scared right now what's going on above me. I'm not going to lie to you, man. This it's place the, is shaking. The Harry Styles concert. Harry Ween is happening go. right above us Second here down. in the big building at Madison Square Garden. And it feels like an earthquake in this place. And trust me, Tim, you and I have been through these as has oh, Andre guys, Ward. Off each other's Let's do it. But anyways, there's an earthquake in the ring because Jonas Sultan 
has proven dropping Caraballo four times with the right hand in the second and sixth rounds and with the left hand in the third and ninth round. Andre, you talk a balanced power attack. I mean, Sultan has every punch in the arsenal, but here comes Caraballo. <laughs> Man, but he gets moved. Sultan gets moved when Caraballo lands on straight lefts. Caraballo has to open up and go for broke. He's got to go for broke because Sultan's just dropped him too many times in terms of the scorecard. But Caraballo should be encouraged because he moves Sultan when he hits him. It's just one shot at a time, Dre. That's all he's throwing. That's he needs problem. to throw combinations. That's the problem. Hey, Load up, come back, with that right back, hook back, after back. that left Don't hand lands. There's a nice right hand once again from Sultan. There's always an answer to what oh. Caraballo has, and that left shook Caraballo. Even though Sultan is a bit fatigued, he should be encouraged to know that, hey, when I touch this guy the right way, he goes down. He should try to get him down or out again before this next minute and a half in this last round. The crowd is chanting Caraballo's nickname, but he's going to need something special in this last minute and a half of round number 10. A lot of questions answered for me tonight. Caraballo definitely got a lot of skill, and he also has punching power. The one thing, the box that he didn't check for me that he's checking right now, does he have a chin? If he had a chin, I said this young man could be a world champion. But as of right now, what I'm seeing, he's going down every time he gets hit flush on that chin. I mean, 118 is full of killers. Naoya Inoue, Nonito Donaire, John Real Casimero, who Sultan has already beaten. Ubali, Jason Maloney, Takuma Inoue, Rigondeau. Next level stuff, guys. And all them boys can punch. Yes. <laughs> You're right about that. And take a shot, too. Yeah. Need to rip that uppercut. Stop. Don't punch. And time will tell with Caraballo if he can take a shot or not. If this keeps happening, then I think that's a fair assessment. But it's tough to say in this kind of fight. You know, give him a few more fights. I agree with that. But, but I, I appreciate the way he's battled back yes. in this fight. So a ton of character, even though he got caught there with a nice right uppercut, Caraballo had never been past six rounds and he's really been in this fight and it's just been those slight mistakes that Sultan's been able to take advantage of that mark a huge difference in this fight. Referee Johnny Callis said it best. Great fight, guys. Oh my goodness. Wow. Great fight. My Great nerves fight. are so up right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. There was a lot to enjoy in this fight if you like power punchers and boxers. Yeah, these guys started off fast. You see, you see Sultan get, get, get that right hand in there straight from the jump, and that started all the trouble for Caraballo, and they just opened up. We wanted to see if Caraballo could respond the right way, and respond he did. He got his own left hand in there multiple times. He went down right there, but he just kept battling back. But it seemed like every time Caraballo would get momentum, Sultan would land a shot that would send Caraballo down and change the momentum of the fight. But Caraballo never stopped trying to win. He never stopped trying to think his way and fight his way back into the fight. And you have to respect that. But I think Sultan just had too much punching power, too much size for Caraballo tonight. You know what? Sometimes, Bernardo... You live by the gun, you die by the gun. You got a lot of punching power, 14 and 0, 14 knockouts. He didn't get knocked out tonight, but what I'm saying is he got knocked down several times. I give him props for the strength and having the courage to continue and to get up and fight like a champion. He does have a ton of skill. He does have a ton of heart. And I'm not sure what's going to happen tonight because the judge has been kind of off tonight. To be honest with you, <laughs> but I want to see more of Caraballo and I want to see more yes. of Salt. All right. Me too. We usually look at overall punches, but here these are the power punches. 515 power punches thrown. And although Caraballo landed 10 more, the 85 that Sultan landed, he made them count tonight, Mark. Hey, whatever happens tonight, I pay to see each of these guys again, and I pay twice to see a rematch. <laughs> 
Come on, Mark. You've never paid for a fight in your life. You've got all the hookups and connections in the world. Please. But that's heartening to say that Mark would actually open up his wallet to watch wow, these two man. fight. <laughs> no, it, this is the entertainment. This is boxing. When you see them having their, you know, heart on their sleeves, and Mark Chinook is still getting the numbers added up. We got to get this commission a calculator, I'm telling you, man. man. I'm telling you, it right makes now. me nervous, Tim. Every time. <laughs> Man, they, they, you know what, they filling out they, they uh, scorecards with pencils, with, with erasers on the end of them. <laughs> All right, let's see what the judges have to say after the four knockdowns in favor of Jonah Sultan. Mark Chinook has the official numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. After 10 rounds here inside the Hulu Theater, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Kevin Morgan, Tony Paolillo, and Willis Gerlden all score the bout 94-93 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now the WBO Intercontinental Bantamweight Champion, Jonas Lotion Sultan! All right, guys, it's been a theme all night long. How does a guy who drops the opponent four times